Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Dust Cause Robotics, and today's video will show you how I built my very own combat robot arena, and how you can build your own. As I've said many times before, my ultimate goal of making this YouTube channel was to spread my love for the sport of combat robotics and to get others involved. I generally don't ask for money, because I want to be sure that you guys get something in return for any money that you spend. I'll have links to where you can access all the design files and instructions for free down below. I've set it up on my web store with a suggested but totally optional donation. You can edit the price in the cart to whatever you'd like, including zero dollars, just like I did with my brushless gearbox design before. This is due to the fact that I actually did build this thing myself. I spent dozens of hours designing it, compiling all the files into one place for you all to download them and replicate this if you wish. I created a detailed bill of materials with purchase links, and I wrote a 10 page long guide on how to assemble it and the kinds of modifications you can make without having to do more massive design changes. This has been a months long project and a ton of work, but to try and expand the number of events available to compete in, I'm willing to give it away for free. Whether you choose to donate or not, you can still support me and this channel by liking this video, subscribing, and hitting the bell icon if you haven't already. And one of the biggest ways you can help is actually by sharing my channel with friends or family who might also benefit from learning about this wonderful sport, or who you think might just enjoy watching my videos. I'll also give you locals near the Boston area the opportunity to purchase my single already built arena, and I'll explain why later on. Quick disclaimer. I have a more fully written out disclaimer in the Google Drive folder for this project, which you should definitely read if you choose to replicate this project. The gist is, I don't want to be held responsible if anything goes wrong as a result of someone building this arena and hosting an event, just in case anyone were to get hurt. Whether or not you did it properly, you do need to apply quite a bit of common sense and understand the dangers involved with combat robots in general, and especially when you're building an arena that's the only thing stopping other people from being endangered by the robots. There's always a chance that something can go wrong, and I don't want to be held liable if it does. Also, don't be an idiot, and please be safe. Thanks to Send Cut Send for sponsoring this project by providing me with some free laser cut parts. In the interest of transparency, Send Cut Send didn't pay me any cash or require me to say anything nice about them for this video, but they offer a fantastic service for bot builders and hobbyists alike. I simply agreed to shout them out in this video and social media in exchange for getting some free parts. I've said great things about them in the past, and I'll continue to do so in the future simply because they offer an amazing service at an affordable price. Check them out at the links below. What makes an arena different from a test box? Well, an arena is much bigger than a test box, generally speaking. In this case, this arena is actually 4 feet by 4 feet, and most test boxes are a lot smaller than that. But, number two, visibility is a lot more important in an arena. Instead of just having a clear top like my test box and maybe one clear wall, I actually have it so that you can see from every single side except for one wall of this arena. Cameras and lights inside of it allow you to see even better or even live stream the events. Next, safety is paramount, even more so than with a test box, because here you're not just putting your own self at risk, you're putting many other people at risk if an arena were to fail during a fight. And you also have full control over what your robot is doing in a test box, and you can choose to take as many or as little risks with what you choose to test as possible. But you have no control over what happens during a fight, and a robot could have its weapon full speed launched into the side of the box, so an arena generally has to be a lot tougher than a test box does. Next, the door needs to be able to lock easily and quickly, and potentially even be operated by children who don't quite understand how important it is to make sure the door is locked. So in this case, I opted for a gate latch that will actually lock itself whenever the door is closed, and the door basically will swing itself closed if you just let go of it. And lastly, I wanted this arena to be only somewhat portable. Some test boxes are built into a shelf, or built with no wheels or any way to move them around. This thing was going to weigh close to 350 pounds when fully assembled, so I made sure that it was on machine casters so it could be moved around and then have feet deployed when it needs to be sat in one place for an actual arena. So, what were my design goals for this project? Number one, make an arena fully capable of safely fighting ant weight combat robots or testing beetle weights. Number two, no reliance on CNC machining or owning large tools like a table saw. Assembly should require only a cordless drill or a drill press and a hacksaw. Number three, design it so it can be upgraded or expanded upon easily to larger or smaller sizes, so you could even use a similar design for beetle weights or larger robots in theory. Number four, 
make sure it can be replicated by almost anyone. So it's not too expensive, not too hard to source parts, at least anywhere within the United States. And also, you should be able to buy pretty much everything you need online with aluminum extrusions cut to length and polycarbonate panels cut to size. Number five, make sure it's serviceable and repairable. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Number six, keep costs low where applicable without sacrificing on safety. Number seven, add extra options for live streaming, including lights and camera mounts. And number eight, let me know in the comments what else you'd like to see in a combat robot arena. Maybe I can revisit this project in the future. Quickly, I'm gonna go over how all of these goals were met. First off, safety. The entire arena is built out of 8020 aluminum extrusions for rigidity and strength. All of the walls are one quarter inch thick polycarbonate that are floating inside of the channels of the 8020 so there are no stress concentrations from any screw holes. The front wall is three quarter inch plywood with the door of the same thickness and the floor is two layers of three quarter inch MDF so it's cheap and easily swappable. The kick plates around the inside of the arena are 3 inches tall and 1 8 inch thick mild steel, so robots will never be able to directly hit the polycarbonate. They're also spaced about 3 quarters of an inch away from the walls, so even if a robot gets launched straight up, it still won't be able to touch the walls. It's also able to accommodate even thicker polycarbonate if needed, up to about 8 millimeters. But you could also just go to larger extrusions and use even thicker polycarbonate if you wanted to fight beetle weights or possibly even bigger robots, though you'd probably want to make the whole arena much bigger if you did that. Accessibility and minimal tools. The structure is all 8020 extrusions, which you can buy pre-cut to length from 8020's website, as well as all of the assortments of T-nuts and bolts that you need to match, and you can get mount plates from them too. 8020 is ubiquitous in the engineering world, and you can also lower costs further if you have access to the right tools to cut it to length yourself by buying 8 foot or 96 inch uncut lengths. A hacksaw could be used to cut all of these by hand in a pinch, but it would be extremely tedious and laborious. The steel parts that I use to bolt everything together can be ordered from Send Cut Send, pre-drilled and cut to size, because they are a laser cutting company, so drilling is basically free. To save money on the kick plates, I bought 4 foot lengths of bar stock steel, and I cut them to size with a vertical bandsaw at my local makerspace. This could be done, albeit slowly, with a hacksaw, but I don't recommend it. With the help of this project's sponsor, Send Cut Send, I actually designed my own steel mount plates, which are half as thick as the aluminum ones sold by 8020, and they're also a bit cheaper, but they're much stronger as well. You don't need a laser cutter or plasma cutter, nor do you need a metal cutting bandsaw to cut out these odd shapes. You can just use the design files I've included over on Send Cut Send's website and get these parts cut for yourself. Upgradability and expandability is accomplished again by using such a modular engineering system. The 8020 extrusions could be cut to any size that you'd like and joined together using the same mounts with any size frame as long as their extrusions get, really. You just need to have larger polycarbonate to fit inside of them. I wouldn't recommend going too huge though because at a certain point you need to add extra joint plates in the middle of separate extrusions and it could get pretty expensive pretty quick the larger you get, with, especially with how much polycarbonate you have to buy. I used a company called Kerbal Plastics to source the polycarbonate because they offer cutting to size to within 1 32nd of an inch sizes, but there are lots of other industrial plastics suppliers that you could use that offer the same service, so you don't have to buy a table saw or a track saw in order to cut the panels yourself. They were also willing to cut two different size sheets. I have different sizes on the walls and on the ceiling. I also wanted to make this replicable so that anybody could build it. Like I said, I'm using suppliers that'll cut everything to size and provided a bill of materials for all the nuts and bolts and everything else you need. I actually sourced my nuts and bolts from Amazon because I found it was a lot cheaper than buying them from 8020 and paying for their shipping costs. You can buy everything you need online within the United States, and probably in several other countries if you look at other resellers or local dealers. If you can't get Send Cut Send steel plates in your country, 8020 sells similar joining plates that are quarter inch thick aluminum. You just have to make sure you select matching longer fasteners. I did have a couple 3D printed parts in this design, but those are totally optional. You don't really need a 3D printer. I just have one set of parts that ties the base to the subframe so that it doesn't shift around, but that could be replaced with a steel angle bracket. And another was a mount for a camera just to have a universal L-shaped mount for any kind of quarter inch camera screw. But again, 
that could be a steel bracket from Home Depot or what have you. I also wanted to make sure this is serviceable and repairable. Making it out of 80-20 means that you basically just loosen up some bolts and slide the T-nuts out of their slots so you can pull the entire ceiling off of this thing in less than 15 minutes, access all the wall panels that way, and undoing a couple more bolts lets you pull out the ceiling panels as well to swap those if you need to. The entire frame can be lifted off of the subfloor to replace the floor between events or just flip it over, and you don't have to deconstruct the entire frame at all. Crawling inside the arena to replace parts shouldn't be needed for anything except to replace the kick plates, which should last a really long time against ant weights, being as they're steel. To make the whole thing easier to move around, I also added machine casters. These are special because they act like regular caster wheels when you need them to be, but when you want to keep the thing in place, like for an actual competition, you can lower these nylon feet by screwing in these little handles on the bottoms of each foot and that way it'll be standing on solid feet and still these casters are able to hold hundreds of pounds. To keep costs down I wanted to minimize not only the cost of materials but the cost of tools needed. That's why I designed this so that you really only need a hex key set, screwdrivers, a hacksaw, and a cordless drill with some new sharp bits to drill the steel. No welding, no CNC machining, no CNC router, nothing like that. The whole arena could probably be built cheaper with other materials like wood, but it would be a lot less simple to build and a lot less easy to repair, and it would likely involve using more expensive equipment to make it. That's why I designed this whole thing to be made out of aluminum extrusions instead. In fact, just the wood that's in this alone is like 200 pounds with the two MDF base layers. The whole arena together weighs maybe 300 to 350 pounds, with the frame being about half the weight and the subframe being another half. The polycarbonate and aluminum extrusions are the most expensive parts of the whole build. Together, they are about $350. However, if you work for a makerspace or robotics club or a university, you might be able to get these materials for free or reduced costs by reaching out to local companies which supply them. Keep in mind, my main goal here was not to make the cheapest possible arena, but to make one that I know that would be safe and would meet all of the other design goals I mentioned. Lastly, I have add-ons for streaming. I've included files for 3D printable camera mounts, like I said earlier. Those will work with any USB webcam with a standard quarter 20 tripod mount, and you can buy off-the-shelf camera arms that'll work for pretty much any other kind of camera you could think of. This is the cheapest way to hook up a laptop and get instant live streaming capabilities. I've also included 12 volt truck lights, the same type used at the Norwalk Havoc Arena to provide lighting. They should be incredibly bright and provide plenty of light for competitors and cameras alone. Obviously, you could use some much higher quality lighting equipment and cameras, or none at all, but this should be a good starting point. So, how do I feel these goals were met? I think all of the goals have been met, however due to the pandemic, I didn't really have a chance to test this thing in combat. I have the arena fully assembled right now at the Framingham Makerspace, and it feels pretty sturdy to me. There's no way any ant weight I've ever seen would breach through quarter inch thick polycarbonate walls. It was also a pain to get the latch placement perfect. A simple sliding deadbolt would probably work just as well, but I chose the gate latch because it's self-locking to make it as safe as possible if it was used around or by kids. Like I said before, the whole thing's really heavy, a lot heavier than I would have liked, and also fitting a 48 by 48 by 3 quarter inch single piece of MDF into the trunk of my SUV proved to be much more difficult than I had intended, so it's a little bit less portable than I would have hoped as well. For anyone who wants to buy the arena off of me or is hoping to build one themselves, I would recommend a pickup truck be used or rented when carrying the lumber. Still, the metal frame and the floor, plus the subfloor, can individually be moved or lifted by just two people with no issues. Assembly is doable with one person, but two or more would be ideal. So why am I selling my arena? I started this project long ago, even before attending BattleBots in October of 2020. I built the arena around November. Originally, I was hoping I could host events once the pandemic died down, but that hasn't really happened yet. Only just now are we starting to see a glimmer of hope with vaccinations, but I just got a new job and moved from Massachusetts to New Hampshire for my new job at DECA, as I'd mentioned in some past videos. I found out there's another makerspace less than 15 minutes from where I'm now living, and it has a Tormox CNC machine and lots of the other tools like I'd been using at the Framingham makerspace. I've moved about an hour from Framingham, and it's at Framingham where the arena is now sitting, collecting table saw dust. While I'm still close enough to Boston that my involvement with Bloodsport will remain unaffected, and I'm a little further from Norwalk Havoc, but I can still attend those events, I can't really keep the arena at the Framingham Makerspace after my membership lapses at the end of April 2021. 
so I'm hoping to sell it to someone who can actually use it at some point when it's safe to hold events again. I was able to build my arena quite a bit cheaper than what it would have cost to replicate it, since the Framingham Makerspace had received donations of all the aluminum extrusions I needed, and thanks to Send Cut Send's donation of parts. I'm asking for serious offers starting at around $400, local pickup only near Framingham, Massachusetts. I'll come down to greet the buyer myself and help to transport it. If you're interested in buying it rather than just YouTube commenting at me, send me an email directly at justbecauserobotics at gmail.com. I'll include that down below. Once sold, I'll pin a YouTube comment and edit the description of this video to let everyone know. If I don't get a paying buyer in time, I'm willing to donate the arena for free to a makerspace, robotics club, or similar organization. Please share this video with anyone you know who might be able to make use of it or might like to buy it. Thank you all for your continued support. That's all I have for you today. If you liked this video, hit like. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe and hit the bell icon. I have another surprise announcement coming soon for a future video, and I'll get back to higher quality videos once my new apartment is all set up. Thanks for watching!